Welcome to the Marine Technology Cluster and this Asset Inventory Meeting, Project 17. Uh, so just a little background on Project 17. We are a federally designated regional innovation cluster and our industry that we're innovating in is agriculture. Uh, and so the point of Project 17 is to create a cluster in the Tri-County region, which is Congressional District 17, by the way, uh, of ag tech companies or technology companies that are supporting agriculture. And uh, as part of that, uh, we are looking at this inventory of regional assets. And Andrea Neal is really heading up this project with Alex Adams over here. And we're just the facilitators because we want you guys to do the work. <laughs> <laughs> now, we have several initiatives under Project 17. Um, we have a, an ag tech fund that's being developed for uh, doing this initiative. Um, Chris, what are some of the other ones? I can never can think of them when I need them. Some of the other initiatives. Robotics. Ro we're looking at a robotics initiative where several of our more geekish friends have said, you know, let, let's put together, uh, get some grants and put together an initiative around robotics and agriculture. And we're looking at doing a nationwide uh, high school and college robotics competition for agriculture. Grant facilitation. And, and grant facilitation, so we're trying to help people get some grants into the region. Um, all to create, so, so that this, be, this region becomes the center of the universe for ag technology. And so, Joe Marie? Okay, great. Thank Joe you so much for letting me come here. Um, I, I really appreciate the opportunity. I'm going to give you a little bit of background of where the connectory came from, where it's going, how long ago it started, and um, that it's rooted in the basic premise that you can't do economic development unless you know what you have. Otherwise, you're just coming up with the buzzword du jour. And, um, and that, so what I'm trying to say is that knowing what you have is an asset inventory. And, so, and that there's no substitute for getting out there and getting to know the people, the assets, the organizations, the companies that that make up your economy and where there might be convergences. If you don't know who they are, then, you know, it's, it's like somebody saying, oh, I think I want to put biotech in my backyard because that, there's a lot of high wages in that. Well, what if you don't have what would sustain biotech? So that's the basic premise, and everything else I do is underpinned by that premise, that, that you have to know what you have. And you'll notice that where the intersection on the globe is there is the East County of San Diego County. That's why it's the center of the universe. <laughs> and no matter what else we do with the tagline, our board um, insists that those lines intersect right there. So, um, This is just a timeline about where it came from. When I say the word regional, it's because no matter where it goes or where it expands, it flourishes where there are groups like yours where there are collaborative groups that care about the region or the industry within the region or some other community of interest. And if you went and looked at the whole connectory, almost all of the population of the asset profiles are on the West Coast because it grows where we have partnerships and where we're not going into somebody else's backyard and say we're collecting your information. Not that we haven't applied for a national <coughs> mapping project, but it, it, and we could be done, but to get really detailed information on your assets and your companies and to form those relationships, you need to spend a little bit of time on that. But this is just to show you where it came from. Um, um, Andrea knows that we started way back in the early 90s, actually the early 90s, a survey led to this project. And um, it was the recession with a little r, this is the one we're having now is a big r. Um, <laughs> in the early 1990s, and in San Diego, it really was um, one of the reasons that it happened, among many others, was a worldwide recession, but the defense downturn in spending, and we lost a lot of our major uh, manufacturers. You'll hear people say that in the 90s and early 2000s that San Diego transitioned from a defense economy, don't let them fool you. It's still a defense economy, but it also had a much more diverse economy than it used to, a high tech and a life science sector, and many other things. But those sectors talk to the defense world all of the time. So that's one of the engines of our ec economy, and it, it hasn't stopped being one of the engines of our economy. And you have the maybe postgraduate school here. So 
I wouldn't, I would make sure that they're one of your partners then because it, you never know where, what they need and what you're talking about are going to intersect. And then that's where it came from. It's a survey we did. We wanted to find out what we had. We were asking them how they were adapting to the, the downturn in defense. And eventually, and I'm not going to go into the whole story about the survey, but we ended up interviewing companies, a, a random, random stratified sample of the ones we had collected as part of the screening survey, for which we got a 90% response rate. And that's what I'm going to mention in the 90% response rate is that you, you don't get response rates on surveys like that unless you go to them. People don't come to you to do surveys. You have to go to them. And that absolutely underlies everything about the philosophy of the connector is that you need to reach out to your assets. They may want to tell you about themselves, but you need to take some initiative. Otherwise, as I said earlier, this isn't... Asset inventories are not like a dating site. Even though you're all very, very excited about how you're going to collaborate together, those companies who are trying to make payroll are, aren't going to volunteer. You're going to have to go to them in some way and make it easier for them to do, to provide you with the information you need to help them collaborate better. Anyway, we, we went out and we, what we found, by the way, in that survey is that the more we knew about the core competencies of the company, the, the more we were able to link them up with each other. We would be able to find a company that had uh, a piece of machinery that broke down and they weren't going to make a delivery and we found a small machine shop that was able to reverse engineer this seven inch diameter bolt that held together the piece of machinery over a weekend so they could make a delivery to Airbus. Those are the kinds of collaborations we were talking about in the supply chain. We also, by the way, absolutely believe that it's not just the innovators at the top of the food chain, it absolutely is the entire supply chain. And uh, as a matter of fact, the connector has now become the, the database for the near sourcing initiative of San Diego Connect. Do people know who Connect is? It's the, since 1985, it's a group that's been spurring entrepreneurial growth in the high tech and life science sectors in San Diego. They finally decided that they can't just worry about the companies at the top of the food chain. They really have to talk about the entire supply chain and maybe that companies who provide everything from prototyping design to testing should be helping those high tech entrepreneurs get their product to market faster. And it, that also benefits the whole economy of the region, not just the people who are doing the innovation. It, anyway, it came out of the post-Cold War challenge. It's come full circle. Defense is now making investments in it. They're looking at it as a market intelligence gathering tool because the Defense Department does a really bad job of paying attention to what industry is doing. They just wait for the same suspects to apply for the same contract. And then with the wire projects, what sets it apart, again, it's the focus on core capabilities and competencies. Our asset or company profiles talk about the, um, the equipment, the facility, the unique solutions, the applied technologies, materials, uh, staff expertise. So it's, and it encapsulates it so it's in a profile form, thereby not having you have to navigate everybody's websites. It's the search engine on the public end of the site, it's Google driven. Um, so it searches absolutely everything in the profile and anything else underneath of it. That doesn't mean we've optimized the technology, but it does mean we are using it for that purposes. Um, the, and you can segment the database because we do not try to focus absolutely laser pinpoint on a particular industry, type of company, type of technology, or even geography. That if you cut across in all industries at every level of supply chain, that's my graphic of it, then you can segment the database however you like. You know, whatever you define your community of interest it is. And I, that's why I'm particularly bringing up Wired is because I, if you guys come up with an algorithm for innovation, I still want to know what it is. Because I, I don't know what it is, even yet. Um, that's just necessity. a Pardon me? I thought it was necessity. Could be. I mean, my problem is that to, to try to do the sorting, I want to say these, this, is where, this is where the innovation is burbling for. And when does the vocabulary of that innovation become something that actually got a, has a critical mass of some sort? I think that's really interesting. One of the um, SBA awards for advanced de defense technology cluster is in San Diego, right. and they wanted to focus entirely on cybersecurity and autonomous systems, remote sensing, or robotic systems <coughs> in the field. But they found that, that all of the classic databases they were trying to use for that weren't going to help them because you, these NAICS codes that people use, the, the demographic codes that people use to analyze the economy, 
absolutely do not keep pace with innovation. It doesn't happen, and you all know that. You know, that's why you need these sorts of networks you're talking about and ways for people to collaborate with each other. So they'll see those convergences when they happen. Mostly this chart tells you what we don't have. It's not retail, it's not where to go to dinner, it's not where to get your next date, it's not where to get your dog room. However, if you have, de if you have developed the newest app for dog groomers, then you can have a profile, so. Um, over 20,000 profiles, honest to God, they grow one at a time. We are look, working with some people, and maybe we'll talk to some of you about some semantic search engines that would help populate the profiles automatically and then let actual experts go in and make it a little bit more detailed because there's, there's a limit to what the human brain can do. I know you've all seen Watson play Jeopardy, however, um, when he was wrong, he was spectacularly wrong. So somebody needs to look at the profiles every once in a while. Um, when I say net profiles, we do have a process for keeping the data up to date. It's not always up to date because the companies change, they merge, they acquire, they go, they're acquired, they go out of business, they move across a county line. Because of the way we've grown geographically, um, we try to make sure we have the local, like the local office of Science Applications International or Lockheed, so you can describe what's going on in your region for that larger corporation. We actually have a proposal out right now to try to link all those parent-child uh, distributed relationships, and I think it's a, it's a pretty interesting, matter of fact, I might like to bounce the idea of that, uh, that logic off of somebody here to see if it makes sense to them in terms of how to do that. Everybody, each company owns its own pro profile there or asset. It's password protected, but partners are given insight and visibility into all of the profiles through the back end, the administrative back end, which I will show you. Um, what that means is that those of you who can help make these linkages have a chance to go in and look at the information and work with it and run reports and contact the people. And so we have two customers for Connectory. Absolutely, the companies and assets that profile in and use the tool, we don't charge any of them any money. But the people who, who possess the portal back end and can use it for their purposes, our portal partners, that's our other customer, and they're the ones who've made investments in it. Can you tell, like, what will be an example of that, a portal customer? A portal, I'm going to tell you, I will be showing you several different portals. This is just a little bit of the search capabilities, keywords, combined searches. So there's classic Google-driven type secret sauce, keyword searches with the, their algorithm for relevance, and then also combined with um, field searches so you can sort. On the public site, we only give you so much. On the administrative site, I'll show you the filters and I will tell you that the Defense Department is, is now paying us to allow us to do the full keyword search filters on all of the fields in the, prof uh, in the connectory profiles to be able to produce reports on demand because they want to use it for a um, market intelligence tool. So w when you see the back end, whatever you can search for on the front end, any part of any profile, you'll also be able to search for on the back end. The mapping we have right now is a prototype. We've also just invested in totally redoing the map with the geography department at San Diego State. They've got a whole bunch of new technologies that I don't know anything about except that I know that what we have is, is, is limited. It was free, so that's why we used it. Um, but we know that location, location, location is critically important. So the mapping part of it, asset inventory is one piece of it, but also knowing the assets is the other thing, really spending some time to get to know them. We're about to add some more mapping capabilities, but what I will tell you that even now, even though it was done by a, a, it was a student project who did the back end of it, but even now you can click on a marker and you'll get the entire connectory profile, not just the name. So we're going to improve that over the next year. I just did this last night to say there are assets from your region in the connectory right now. That's where the, there's 84 profiles from Santa Cruz County, 76 from Monterey, which I spelled wrong. Sorry about that. <laughs> I was 10 or 30 last night that I was that's, doing this that's one That's a, a common abbreviation. Is it really? <laughs> so, somebody explain why the Monterey in Mexico has two R's and R's has one here. Does anybody know the answer to that? So we can tell the difference. Oh, what? <laughs> so we can tell the difference as well. <laughs> and there are 907 companies who, who say their market is in agribusiness. I will show you that, tell you about that distinction in a little bit. And there's only eight in San Benito, and we only grow where we have people who care about growing the assets. 
I mean, we're not going in somebody else's backyard and profiling their companies unless they, somebody wants to pay us to do the profiles or teach them how to do their own profiles. We'll do both. So, and also, Santa Cruz and Monterey were part of the wired corridor, the, the made up geography that they had, and San Benito was not. So that's the, one of the reasons it's so small there. I also noticed that your proposal said you need to spend more time there. Is that, yeah. This is just benefits for buyers and suppliers. I'm, I'm not, it, it, some of this is really common sense, so. I'll, but the fact that we're a nonprofit and we don't charge the people to have profiles is that made people like Lockheed Martin and Boeing and people like that very happy that we weren't charging small companies to, to have a presence in the tool. So I, I'll just leave that. This is the, these are the fields we, we take information on. Only those ones that are red are absolutely critical. That, but that leads us to believe we can develop sort of minimal profiles using some kind of semantic engine that would populate the database. But to go in and be able to do this rest of this, that's going to take a little bit more work to really understand those sorts of things. This protected proprietary area, it was done as part of the WIRE project. It's only available in the administrative site. So if companies want to share things, if you want to get an industry think tank together to talk about innovations, but they don't really want to have it shared on the public site, you could do it back there. I guarantee you there are better tools to do that than what we have. I'm not even pretending that our tool is the right tool for that. But we put it in there because the WIRE project really wanted us to have it. Um, and we also added collaboration opportunities, this one down here. Because when you add assets like university research center centers and institutes and federal R&D laboratories, doing collaboration with them means you need to go, you need to know the rules of engagement. You just can't do a handshake. Um, those of you who are CSU, Monterey Bay, know that you can't just do a handshake with a business and say, uh, you know, we'll collaborate in R&D. You've got to go through something. So there's always a, the, what the rules of engagement are in that collaboration opportunities piece. This is what we're doing with DOD. I'll tell you about it later if you care. Um, they're very interested. They've been interested in a while, and now it looks like they might actually write us into a, a, a budget document going forward. These are some real-world examples of how we've made it, how it's worked over time. I have many, many, many of these sorts of success stories. Again, our tool's not real good at blowing its own horn. You know, maybe we'd like to work with somebody and collaborate with you about how you tell the successes. I have a brilliant one that just came out of our Northwest uh, network, which is the six, six Northwest states that just came out two weeks ago, and I'll, I'll tell you about that in a little bit. Um, what's the business model? The idea is that the connectory cuts across all industries at every level of supply chain, and then you bring your portals together either by geography or by industry or a combination of both or by some other community of interest. And the innovation portal was the one for the WIRED project, the California Aerospace Portal, which was launched in March 2009. If, if you said part of your market was in the aerospace sector and the company self-identified or the asset self-identified, and we were able to show that they weren't just making pictures of F-18s on t-shirts, right? Um, and if you were in California, then you got automatically sorted into the portal, even if you came to the portal through some other means. And that's one of the beauties of it is that whatever your segmentation or area of interest is, it, somebody else's area of interest happens to overlap and you meet the criteria for the segmentation then you end up in the portal. Um, the business org and iframe, I want to bring that up to you in a little bit. Um, one of the things you guys might want to consider is, although nothing takes the place of actually understanding and getting the information on your assets, the core competencies of them, you might not want what's on the outside of the connector. It's not particularly sexy but you could drop the search engine and the search interface of the database into something else and that's what the state of Oregon has done. The Pacific Northwest portal, we have the partner is the Pacific Northwest Defense Coalition. They have access to the back-end administrative portal but the, the state of Oregon just said we want the Oregon piece and that part of the search interface inside our economic development website. So they didn't get the rest of the portal, they just got that piece of it. So. Um, why, did, why was it chosen as the wired platform? It's because we existed. We had a relationship with the California Space Authority. They actually stayed up between Thanksgiving and, and New Year and wrote the proposal. That's the re As Andrea will tell you, they called her. Christmas Eve. And they called us, and I told my CEO at the time, what the hell, they're good partners. You know, what's it going to take for us to write a letter of support and a mock budget won't win anything? So that's what we did. But the idea was that 
we are, that you needed to have these knowledge of the assets, that's the fundamental principle. The, the modules are discrete capabilities packets and it's searchable with full content so you didn't have to rely on NAICS codes and patent numbers and all those sorts of things that play into an asset inventory analysis about the strength of your region or your cluster, but it doesn't take the place of the real companies and the real assets that are on the ground and how they may or may not relate to each other. The, also, the idea was that the connectory could be used to make our partners in the WIRE project actually go form relationships. In other words, pick up the phone and call your federal laboratory if you are in, if you are in the Workforce Investment Board. Maybe you should know who those people are. Um, it, and we had a lot of struggle with that all through the 13 counties that were in the quarter of it. Don't just go to the Jet Propulsion Labs website. Actually pick up the phone and get to know the tech transfer director. Those are the kinds of things we were trying to foster. Maybe it'll be better if you have sexier technology around the outside. I don't know. And then the idea was that we were going to also add the capabilities for those, for the first time, of those laboratories and university centers and private research institutes, which we had never had profiles of before. Um, those are the things we added. We, the partners were given, one partner was the part portal authority, where they would be the one who controlled the, the group within the cluster or community of interest, and then other limited permissions were given to other people to add or edit profiles, but not necessarily like send broadcast emails and those sorts of things. There are a lot of cooler things to do that, like how to share information than we have right now, but um, it depends on who you give the authority to use the transfer of information. Um, the innovation test, this is where I didn't have an algorithm for it, so if you guys have one, you let me know what it is. Um, in other words, we were able to code being sorted into an aerospace portal, or if it's purely geography, that's really easy to do. But to say whether something is innovative, so we ask ourselves three questions, and it's done with a toggle switch now. But there are some really fascinating things going on out there about how you see when an innovation is starting to burble up. And um, I'm interested in anything like that, so if you want to share with me the other way, we're always looking for ways to to uh, push the connectory forward. But those are the three questions we asked ourselves. Is it developing commercialization of the fielding of a brand new technology? Are you applying an existing technology in an absolutely new way? And I'm gonna use an old example, but is, does anybody remember what logistics looked like before there was information technology? Everybody remember this longshoreman with a clipboard, right? They still have longshoreman clipboards, but maybe they're iPads now, I don't know. But I'm, I'm, it, they, FedEx first and then everybody else absolutely transformed the movement of goods and services through information technology. So that changed Memphis. I mean, that's one of the poster childs of how their economy transformed was when FedEx decided to put itself there. And it's because they changed the way logistics were done. Um, and then the diffusion of it. We also say that it's innovative if you take a technology, some, a sustainable technology, and diffuse it all the way through an industry that can make real gains not only for the planet, but also for the economy of a region. So when you diffuse an innovation. So those are three questions we asked ourselves. What we didn't do is automate it to ask the content of the profiles and see if it belonged in the innovation portal. portal. I'm just telling you that I don't have that algorithm, but if one of you do, please come and see me. This is just an example of an aerospace portal. Again, the reason I'm, this is here is that it, of the thousands of profiles that are in the California aerospace portal, the entire aerospace supply chain, only this much, about 20% of them, have NAICS codes that are clearly, clearly aerospace. There are about six or seven of them, and then a partial one, like the sensor navigation guidance one. All the rest of them are companies that have self-identified. Now, for example, there is, a, there is a company in the California aerospace portal that does nothing but design and build aircraft hangars. They have a construction NAICS code, but are they part of the aerospace supply chain? Dang straight they are. So, but they're also part of the construction group. So where people have their feet in different clusters. So I'm just, and this is really important to your policy makers. So to be able to tell your congressperson that you have aerospace in your region and you didn't think you did. And I need to tell you a story about when I came to Monterey in 2007 to do a wired presentation and somebody in the audience and I don't know who they were they were somebody from Monterey whether it was county or the city or economic development I don't know and they stood up and said 
we don't have any innovation, we just got agriculture. And I said, so how are we gonna bring innovation here? And I said, well, I'll bet there's a whole bunch of innovation going on with agriculture, or there should be, but if that's what you have, that's where you look for your innovation. I just distinctly remember, I, I, I was in the front of the room and I couldn't really see him, but I get that question all the time. It's like, well, we wanna bring biotech here, or we wanna bring whatever, you know. And I said, well, why don't you work with what you have and find out what's innovative there before you go try to attract something. I believe, by the way, the buffalo hunt days of economic development are over, you know, especially in California, because you're not gonna be able to attract somebody here with a bunch of incentives. You may have incentives, but that's not how you're gonna attract people. Um, again, the Northwest Portal, they were instrumental along with the Department of Defense in making us, we were a California only asset for the longest time. And in 2009, we were able to bring the default up to the US and now it's some. And then I, that's the iframe I had told you about. They didn't, they didn't want the whole connector because they were gonna pay Pacific Northwest Defense Coalition to take care of their assets and their, their part of the six state region. And they just, but they wanted the search interface inside of their site. And that's the, now I'll actually show you the tool the best I can. This is the public site. Again, not all that sexy. Um, we, what our, our issue has always been where do we find the money to make it sexier when we spend most of our investment on making sure the information is collected, that it's correct if we can to the best of our ability, and that it's searchable and that the um, profiles are good snapshots of companies and their capabilities. Um, the blue bar up here is always the US connectory. And then if you're in a portal, and I'll just pick one right off the top here. I guess I could do full screen, huh? I didn't pick, there we go. The number that, of assets in there, when we finish the wire project, there are only 1,200. So that lets you know that even though there's no wire project, nobody's paying a single wired partner to do anything, this thing continues to grow. Now, one of the problems with the asset, the CIC asset inventory is that the Department of Labor, you know what happens when you get federal funding, they tell you what to do, um, would not let us do anything except in those 13 counties that were defined in the quarter. Those of you who did IHUB proposals know there was a link to the CIC portal inside the IHUB solicitation. Well, I called the state and I said, you know, the other counties in California aren't going to get sorted into this portal because even if they're innovation assets because it doesn't take very much money and I could do it, but I need to talk to you about what your commitment to this is if we break, let it be the entire state. So um, I can tell you right now that they are discussing it. The GoEd office has called me, I've called them, and other iHubs and innovation clusters in California have said, how do we get be part of this? What can we do? And I said, why shouldn't it be coordinated? So whoever in this group is your point of contact for the GoEd group might want to. Um, I don't know if we have one. Do we have anybody who's talking directly with GoEd? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Supposedly, General Electric is involved in this somewhere, somehow. Um, I don't know if it means their money, which would be cool, but it might be something else entirely. Um, but I just thought, rather than I'll talk to anybody who's interested in a portal, but if there's a way that there could be some coordinated resources, that would benefit all of us. So, you know, even if we, if, you know, we're, we run our own server now, I'd like to get out of being on my own server. I'd like somebody else to have this and for us to be sort of the, the provider of the service, the, the software service. Um, so I'm always open to new opportunities, new partnerships in those kinds of things. Is there some reason you can't use uh, a, a server farm or something? We, we could do that. It's, for us, it's always been the trade-off. The trade-off the trade we've made between you know, having our own equipment and control. control. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we couldn't. You know, absolutely. Could we? I have what I call my tipping point analysis. And the bigger it gets, the more I'm going to be moving in that direction because, first off, I don't want to be in that business anymore. It makes me insane. <laughs> we don't want you to be insane. So for each portal, there's their, its own search interface. You can always do this from, so when you're in this search interface, where you see this sort of rusty colored stuff, which is a different color on every computer screen I go to, um, 
you're in the portal. So when you're searching and when you're in here, then you're only searching whatever the criteria are in the portal. So in other words, if you try to find an innovation ad set and, and there is one, one of those eight profiles that are in San Benito County, even if it's an innovation company or an asset, it's not going to show up in this search because this is the 13 wired counties, which are that strange little dog leg you saw over here. It was totally made up. And essentially, it was the people that the California Space Authority could call between Thanksgiving and New Year's. That's essentially who it ended up being. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So does that include Monterey? It does Monterey and Santa Cruz, yes. And I don't remember who the partners were from the wired partners from Monterey and Santa Cruz right off the top of my head. Um, actually, I can look at the stakeholders piece. These are people who were given, um, these are all the different ones. I'm just scrolling down. People given accounts, if you're given an account to portal admin, you end up in the stakeholders page by definition. And I'm still looking. I guess I could search for the word Monterey, huh? There's it. I don't know. I'm still, we're still looking. I'm not seeing anything. Now, this was only the people who worked in this project. Those who worked in Wired know we, they, California Space had 25 projects, 1.1 1. 1 through 1.1. 1. 12, two point something through, they, anyway, these are the people who are involved in collecting assets. But I, so I didn't actually see anybody from your area here, which is probably telling. Um, so that, that, but, that, but we've been able to take in profiles from this region, that's why there are 84 and 76 and so forth. Success stories, stakeholders, those sorts of things. Um, there's always a map if the portal entity wanted a map. If you go to the Southwest Riverside portal, they call it the Southwest California portal. We had a long debate about that. It's only a, like 14 zip codes in the southwest corner of Riverside County. They didn't pay very much money at all to have a portal. I mean, but they didn't get a map either. So, you know, in the future we may give maps to everybody and it's like a de facto part of what we do. Um, let me try to show you, um, I, I want to be respectful of time. 